when we talk about decolonizing the curriculum, we're thinking about how Western domination, specifically colonialism, imperialism and racism, it has shaped academic knowledge and disciplines over the past couple of centuries. So we might ask the question of why non-Western voices have previously been excluded from the curriculum in the UK and elsewhere. Now there's a lot of complex causes to this. Uh, there's structural reasons, material reasons, as well as uh, what we might think of as cultural or intellectual ones. So I'll emphasise that many SOAS scholars have been aware of this for a very long time, of these issues, and have shaped their reading lists and their teaching to bring authors and thinkers from the global south uh, and from the regions uh, that they're studying, not just to talk about issues in the global south, but to talk about global problems. If we want to like, yeah, move forward as an institution, um, SOAS has to like, yeah, come to terms with its past, and it's not always an easy thing to do, but it's really important to yeah, be aware of our history and how that informs SOAS's identity. So I think, yeah, decolonizing the curricula now is really important for students and they want to see that reflected in their reading lists um, and not just about things to read. Obviously, that's really important to recognize different scholars and books that have been written about um, by, by Africans or by non-Western scholars, but also, yeah, engaging in debate with the lecturers um, as well. The lecturers did um, get visiting lecturers who were from, you know, different places and working on, like, different projects also in Africa. Um, I also wanted to hear more about what was happening specifically with women and technology in the Global South. So just for my personal understanding, I started a podcast on SOAS Radio um, and I was interviewing like activists, um, practitioners, academics about, you know, technology and how they were using it and how also how it was impacting what was happening in the Global South. So when we talk about decolonizing the institution, actually people can mean lots of different things by it. And one of the interesting things that we've been experiencing over the past couple of years is that in having these conversations, we're eliciting lots of different understandings. And we can now start to reimagine uh, what the university can be as an institution. We can think about what the library can do. We can think about how we can engage with the publics and the communities in which we're embedded. We can think about how London operates as a sort of post-imperial circuit and how so us can and should engage uh, with those conversations.